as Rosemary said, KPMG was uh, asked to contribute to that review. And in April of this year, um, we looked at um, uh, other jurisdictions around the world and we looked at the various options that those jurisdictions have pursued uh, in terms of driving for better outcomes for consumers. And we then um, evaluated those options against a set of criteria and thought about uh, how that uh, can apply in Victoria. So what I'm planning on doing is sharing some of the key highlights from that part of the work uh, with you this afternoon. I think it's fair to say, as we all know in this room, um, that it's a complex area around customers, both in terms of uh, customer behaviours and in terms of the customer outcomes we're trying to achieve. And as we went through our work, we saw very much that there were two um, cohorts of customers. Uh, firstly, the active customers um, who will be willing to shop around and look for a better deal. And then secondly, uh, what we termed the passive customers. Um, so those who are sticky, they may have um, switched once or twice, um, but they pretty much stay on um, the same uh, plan and don't uh, fully engage. And we'll explore in a little bit uh, some of the things we found about the reasons uh, for that. In terms of the way that we uh, looked at the global uh, case studies, the, the various countries around the world, um, we assessed the different outcomes against six criteria. So the first one was awareness and intent. And this was in the context of customers in energy retail competition. So how aware were they, how, how interested were they to engage in the energy markets? The second one was around diversity. So what was actually the level of customer choice? You know, how many different products and services and the variability uh, did exist in those different jurisdictions? The third one in terms of activity, this related to the extent to which decisions were made by customers to switch. The fourth one was around experience. So we looked at things like customer satisfaction and complaints. Uh, the fifth area was around retail margins and the extent to which customers are benefiting from competition from a price point of view. And the final area was innovation and evolution. So as each jurisdiction is different and it is evolving at a different pace, what we saw was the innovation that was present in terms of our products and services varied across those jurisdictions. So broadly speaking, um, each jurisdiction we looked at um, has obviously approached reform in a different way. And what we were able to do was kind of group the um, tools that they were using or the different mechanisms into three broad categories. So firstly there in terms of demand side um, measure. So the first one around customer empowerment. So some countries are very are very good, make it very easy uh, for customers to engage, to have their independent information, things like comparison tools um, and specifically targeted campaigns. In terms of non-price regulation, um, this was in the sphere of the characteristics or the nature and structure of the various tariffs, which thereby made it easier for customers to compare across the different offers that they uh, could uh, take up. Under the um, protecting passive customers, um, an area that some countries have pursued has very targeted protections uh, in the case of vulnerable customers. And so complementary measures to really target that segment um, of the community. And then the, the next element of that was around collective bargaining. So a very unique approach where um, the regulator or an other entity, such as a not-for-profit, uh, may be securing um, electricity or gas um, from the market and then providing that to a set of uh, passive customers. And then on the supply side, uh, in terms of price regulation, uh, most jurisdictions do have a form of price regulation even after the markets have opened. Um, but it is important to note that we have observed that this does impact on innovation. And then in terms of price monitoring, um, enabling customers and community um, and policy makers to be able to uh, really uh, monitor the market outcomes. So the key takeaway for us uh, out of these different options here was that um, the policy frameworks that appear to be working the best and the most successful are where there's different aspects all playing a complementary role, but it's being looked at in a holistic sense, not uh, siloed 
thinking. So in terms of the countries we looked at um, and some of the specifics there, and uh, happy to uh, have my colleague Eamon talk about any of the particular case studies in more detail um, if, if anyone's particularly interested at the break. Um, but what we did was we looked at the jurisdictions since the mid-90s, which have opened up to competition, to get a good range there in terms of what we were seeing. Uh, and as I said a moment ago, most countries um, have implemented further reforms since contestability started. And one of the key factors we saw that was really important is the attitude of the regulator uh, in terms of the rules and also how the stakeholder groups apply and work within that. So what are the lessons learnt that we can take from this uh, global uh, review that we did? So the first point there, uh, which I touched on a moment ago, around lower activity levels. So what we saw is that um, countries that had more prescriptive regulations um, typically have lower uh, levels of price dispersion and lower retail margins. Uh, an example for us probably here in Australia of this would be um, in the ACT market, for example. There's really only one or two retailers there. Um, we'd see lower prices, but uh, we'd also hear consumers probably saying that there's no choice or they don't feel that they have lots of choice there, just as an example. Uh, in the second category there around customer support, you know, at the other end of the spectrum, uh, there are some jurisdictions that have been very focused on supporting customers to shop around, to provide that accessibility and transparency of information. And we do see in those jurisdictions um, higher levels of price dispersion and higher margins. But there's also greater levels of diversity. So this is my point about innovation. This is where we're seeing uh, more innovation. And in Australia, again, an example of that would be in Victoria with 20 or so retailers. Um, consumers could be getting uh, bigger savings if they're shopping around. Um, but some consumers may also say there's too much choice and it's too confusing. So you've kind of got this whole spectrum um, and we saw that very much in the countries that we, um, jurisdictions that we looked at. And so I guess the, the takeaway there on the right hand side is really, you know, the government's role in this is to weigh up those different trade-offs uh, from different objectives that you're trying to achieve. But I go back to my earlier point about thinking about this in very much a complementary way and um, doing things which work together and don't uh, work against each other. Just going to do a deep dive on two areas which I thought uh, would be of interest. Um, firstly, in terms of passive uh, customers. So I've touched on this a moment ago that some consumers don't engage. Um, I guess there's a key question there about um, should governments protect them and, and if so, how? Um, and, you know, should those customers effectively almost be taken out of the competitive market into some sort of single buyer or collective bargaining um, arrangement, uh, such as, you know, I mentioned before, a not-for-profit, and obviously we've seen the one big switch as an example, which has some of those elements there. On the other very important topic, which I know is uh, close to uh, the hearts of many people in this room around vulnerable customers, um, again, the topic of financial hardship and affordability is a really big issue. Um, you know, certainly I think we can all see the market is challenged when we have a situation where customers are choosing between essential services and putting food on the table, and we've seen quite a bit of commentary around that impact uh, in recent months. And that concept there that, you know, a shared responsibility between government uh, and industry and consumer groups um, and how to work through that. So certainly what we see, we saw in the global research is that um, vulnerable customers um, may not benefit the competitive market to the same degree as other customers and really thinking through um, how available and accessible to those customers um, are the market offers and really thinking through how should we review and treat that and um, you know, an example would be in, in the UK where they have put in place specific policy framework uh, targeted to uh, vulnerable customers. So I started by sharing the six points of the framework that we assessed. So if I just go back to that and um, just talk through, um, you know, again, the spectrum between the free market and price regulation and the range of things that we saw and against that criteria, um, what we would call out as uh, points for consideration. So under the topic of awareness, um, 
you know, the advertising campaigns, the price comparison websites, um, the ability to increase awareness and interest amongst customers, and then looking at customer empowerment programs to help customers um, to engage more so in this market. Uh, under diversity, it's really important, I think, that there is innovation and there are opportunities for new products and services. Um, so again, looking at how that plays through with the range of policy um, parameters and regulations that are, are put in place. In terms of activity, it's really important that, I guess, the reasons for regulation are really clear so that we understand the impact that that will have on activity in the marketplace. The fourth one there under experience. So uh, New Zealand, as an example, has done quite a bit in customer empowerment policies and that has been targeted at improving the customer experience uh, in interacting in the market. Uh, retail margins. Uh, so certainly some of the research we um, undertook in the UK would suggest that price comparison websites have had a, a, a positive impact in the sense of downward pressure on prices. So again, the more transparent and the more accessible information is to people to help them make the right choices. And market evolution, uh, measures which improve customer knowledge and participation um, are, are really critical and recognising that this is going to continue to evolve. So it's not a set the policy and forget about it. Customer expectations are, are continuing to evolve um, and I think we've seen that through some of the research that the ECA has undertaken. You know, customer attitudes are changing over time and so it's really important from a policy perspective and from an industry perspective that we're in tune with those changing behaviours and keep this evolving so that we keep trying to achieve the objectives that we're looking uh, to do so.